Kava Shant in a, in a cat. And um, also uh, oh, for vascular anomies, the, I had the opportunity to, to produce um, a dog hurt. In this case, it, this was a, a gift for a colleague, a radiologist, because he, he, he was very, um, it was difficult to explain to owners uh, what was the problem because uh, hurt is very difficult to understand. So uh, we produced from a CT scan with uh, this dog, with um, this earth with, uh, with pulmonic stenosis and the uh, coronary artery anomaly uh, related. And uh, I had also uh, some experience in spine uh, teaching anatomy. Uh, there are so, um, a lot of um, pathologies that are very difficult to um, explain to students or, for, or to colleagues also, and uh, of course for owners. So as you can see, uh, at, at the left we have a cat um, congenital vertebral anomaly, and uh, on the right an example of um, severe dog discospondylitis. And um, for the preoperative surgical planning, uh, mainly it was orthopedics, uh, usually axial deviations, any kind of axial deviations. And the most common pathologies that I have the opportunity to, to work on was the patellar luxation, the, the fourth grade patellar luxation. And uh, the other um, main group of um, preoperative surgical planning that I, I had the opportunity to produce was the orofacial surgery. I made um, dog and cats, and on the right you can see a um, red panda. Don't, don't ask me why I had to do this, but it was for University of Milan. It was very strange to, to print. And I had also the opportunity to publish some, some work on that. And here you can find all the workflow that I used to produce these models from the CT scans to the uh, 3D printing. Um, all was working very good, but uh, there was a problem. I had many requests from colleagues also for other kind of uh, models, in particular for medical devices with uh, 3D printing. Not only models, as I said, for uh, understanding the surgery or teaching the anatomy, but also orthotics, prosthetics, surgical tools, etc. And for this kind of uh, production, the CT scans were all, all too expensive, of course, and too risky, because as you know, um, animals are always under anesthesia on, on the uh, CT scans. And so it was important to find a way to um, uh, find a 3D data on work of, to work uh, with the, without the CT scans. So um, in this case, I made Playcast. Um, this uh, was a startup that had a lot of human uh, field experience, and he had patent and hardware and software to scan and design and print medical devices and tools. They invested in uh, a university research. Uh, it takes two years in scanning and printing and designing uh, this kind of uh, these new medical devices. Um, and uh, after two years, uh, Playbet uh, was born. So Playbet is a veterinary made to measure um, provider. It's a provider for veterinary made, made to measure medical devices. And um, the system is very simple. We scan directly the, the, the patient. It is very fast. Um, it is simple because it's, uh, it doesn't need specialized operator and is safe and comfortable because there's no physical stuff like cast or plaster to take the 3D data and there's no sedation or anesthesia or x-ray involved in the process. And there is the design phase where we um, receive the 3D scan and the diagnosis. We do a medical briefing with the physician that requests the, the, the pieces. We do a, a prepare a 3D model and the physician approved that model before the 3D printing phase. This allows uh, the um, physician, the veterinary physician, to um, prepare to, to produce custom um, devices uh, personalized on his own necessity uh, or for the patient's and owner needs, or also to design new complete solutions that are not available from, for the market or they're, uh, or they're basically not explored yet. Uh, what about the scanners? Uh, this is uh, Rowdy, it's our, it's our fake model, dog fake model. And um, this is a, an example in order to compare the two systems. Uh, at the moment we are um, using Playtime Easy, which is uh, based on iPad and Occipital and software, a uh, sensor, sorry. But the software is ours, so the, the way that uh, in, information are um, prepared and, and enrolled are uh, ours. 
and it takes uh, 15 to 25 seconds to have this kind of uh, quality. The Timeline Time Pro instead is the one that we use already in the human field, and it takes uh, less than a second to have a, a very detailed and complete uh, scan. Um, I want to share with you some of the clinical cases that we have uh, um, already um, published, uh, some on, on Instagram or in other, in other places. And um, I divided in three main, uh, four main um, domain. Uh, for orthopedics, I mean limb, being limb problems, uh, even if uh, the problem is not strictly orthopedic in a, clini in a clinic way. Um, this was an example of uh, Jack Russell that had a very bad trauma, uh, car accident, and uh, had this uh, um, severe problem in the, in, with the gait, and uh, the skin was um, a disaster. It was very difficult to manage uh, the, the, the skin of the, of the limb. So, you know, in according to the, the physician that uh, cast the place, uh, the, the pieces, we uh, design a very uh, simple but uh, efficient uh, um, orthotics that uh, allows uh, allowed him to 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 get normally without uh, uh, injuring continuously the, the skin. Another case uh, uh, also from orthopedics is a thoracic limb. Instead, this um, dog went to uh, to for many reasons under um, uh, cervical surgery. Um, it was uh, basically paraplegic. After a few months of physiotherapy, it was able to, to walk, but there was still a problem uh, in terms of um, brachial plexus, uh, but the muscles of the shoulder were still functioning. So it was important to uh, produce some support, specific support, um, in order to um, make him able to use the, the, what was working of the limb according to the physiotherapic uh, therapy. Um, the result is, is great. Uh, the owner was, was very, very happy. And also um, the clinical situation was, is, is improved and is, is still improving. Another case also from orthopedics, uh, so limb management, I said, um, this was a um, Vimeranian with a very bad car accident, is all with a car uh, in, in our cases. And um, here the, the solution was designed as the first case. So it was important to protect the limb in order to um, be, let, let the owner be, be able to manage correctly or simply the, the, the gait, the walk uh, on the normal stuff that uh, animals have to do. And uh, this is the, um, the result. Uh, of course, the, um, the, the lesion of the plexus was completely, so it, it wasn't uh, designed for uh, a correct gait because it wasn't possible, it was a protection. And uh, about surgery devices um, related to bon bones uh, also. This is the, um, another important cases where we had and we are, uh, I, don't, I don't have too much material to, uh, that I can share because it is under review. So uh, it will be published, I, I, I hope, soon. And um, there was a severe ca case of pectus exavatum, and we designed a, a specific 3D uh, splint with the surgeon in order to resolve what, what was the, uh, as, as you can see, the, the cat was very, was unable to um, breathe correctly, and he, she needed the, the um, oxygen box. And after, uh, this is uh, some video from TikTok. I'm sorry, I don't have the original ones. I have to um, take from the, um, the owner. And um, as you can see, the, the spin worked greatly. And now the, the, the cat is completely um, healthy. Another kind of surgery devices also from um, bone, uh, bone uh, uh, surgery. And uh, this was a dog that had uh, a hound dog that had a bad, bad um, encounter with a um, wild animal. And uh, there wasn't enough skin to close. So uh, the surgeon had to cut off some of the costal bones. And uh, there was a severe pneumothorax. So um, after the uh, healing, he decided to ask us for a, a thoracic shield in order to protect the um, the, the surgi surgical um, window in, in this case, and to allow a 
uh, correct managing and a simple managing by the owner of the of the one. Um, another case is from, in this case, neurology. Um, this cat had uh, a very bad situation, a bad anomaly at the cervical spine with uh, um, ataxia and uh, epileptic uh, crisis. And we did with, according to the physician, a cast for blocking the symptomatology. And it worked uh, greatly because with the cast, he stopped to have this uh, uh, the ataxia and also the epileptic uh, crisis. And uh, last uh, um, cases that I, I want to, to share with you today is the uh, physiotherapy uh, cases. Uh, this is uh, our solution for um, the um, armed bandaging. I don't know if this uh, is the correctly the, the transition uh, in, the, in English, but uh, it's a, a bandaging that needs uh, a very rigid uh, position. And um, in this case, uh, there was uh, uh, the necessity to correct uh, um, that problem and uh, a, a, a plate was uh, um, used. And um, the colleague requested us uh, a solution to allow all the uh, physiotherapic uh, things uh, without uh, the necessity to go to the orthopedic surgeon to, um, to put and remove continuously this kind of bandaging. And this is the situation before we play that uh, splint. The red bandage is what I called uh, before armed bandage, and it is placed only by uh, orthopedics, uh, orthopedic surgeon. This is uh, the day zero, so um, it was uh, um, very light and it was very good for, for the dog. And this is day, day one, so the day after he is completely uh, comfortable with it and uh, all the therapy uh, of the physiotherapy on, on this uh, dog was uh, was uh, uh, easily um, put uh, it, it, it was very easy for colleagues to manage this uh, this patient and uh, his uh, his problem on the on the lip and uh, about what about the future uh, with the 3d printing i want to continue uh, the the social media uh, the spread of 3D printing you know, with the social media and the safety feed dissemination. And uh, also I have some, uh, um, um, I want to, to help colleagues to reach a good level in 3D printing application. And in this case, I have to, uh, a call to action if you, if you want to, 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 to call it like that. We are trying to uh, design and um, produce a 3D printing training model for a specific orthopedic surgery uh, in the host species. And uh, we are open for collaboration. So if any one of you uh, thinks that uh, it is able to, to help us or has something to, to, to share with us in order to uh, gain this, uh, this uh, result, uh, I'm open to, 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 to collaboration. With um, PlayVet, instead, we want to uh, spread our system in more hospital, more clinics, more professionals. Uh, we want to reach uh, also equine medicine feed and, and exotic and non-conventional uh, animals. Um, we want to um, finish to, to build and to validate our Playtime Pro in the veterinary uh, field. And last but not least, the new design, new products, uh, and uh, the possibility to test with, pro with, with, with products and also to um, produce some science on it, so uh, a peer review and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera all, all, the, all the things. So um, thank you for, for your attention. And uh, again, thanks for, for, for letting me here uh, to, to speak with you. And I, I'm a fan of all of you, so it's very, very, very interesting for me to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo. That was an awesome presentation. I learned so much more again today. Every time I talk to you, I learn something new. And uh, we have a really good audience today. And we have a couple of really great questions in the QA box. Uh, one is from Francesca Flori. Sorry if I didn't pronounce your name right. Uh, she said, can you scan these animals without anesthesia? And this is a good question because they all move around. I mean, Yes, yeah, of course. Different species too. So how do you manage that to get a good scan? Um, okay, for um, veterinarians, it's not so difficult to uh, block animals in a specific position for 20 seconds. 
this is the 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 thing I can to, I have to share because it's it's not so it's more difficult to take bloods for example in the in, in some cases that uh, instead of do a scan it's all uh, there are some tricks that we, we use but um, it's it's more um experience that than other things so there's no real difficulties in this the the fact is that after the scan is not good so you have to put some software and some knowledge on software uh, validation and, and and process to correct the scan that you have in order to be able to use that scan for do uh, uh, some medical devices is more the second part the managing of the scan instead of the scan itself. Okay, so 20 seconds is what all you need, basically, it sounds like. Yes, more or less, more or less. We have another question from Abdom Twosh, again, sorry if I mispronounced, and he said, all the devices that you're showing, were, were they all done with FDM technology? Yes. I, I guess another extension of that question is, are you looking into other technology to manufacture your devices? Mm, at the moment, we are using only FDM because it's uh, great, it's affordable, and if you if you know how to print, uh, also here there, there are some tricks and some experience in printing and some kind of um, managing of particular material and, and okay, but FDM is, is enough for us. It, it, it depends on the cost because, right. of course, there are Mm, other printers that are works greatly and have a very good quality and etc cetera, etc cetera, but are not affordable we are not selling medical devices um, to 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 sell medical devices we are selling a system to produce medical devices and this is this must be affordable for the market so as you know there's not the same money as in the human medicine not yet so we cannot uh, sell uh, orthotics and prosthetics uh, out of, of the market so it is important to use technologies that allows you to be affordable for the owners you probably mentioned that but what, what's the fdm printer of choice right now for you uh, we had our own hardware and oh, okay. it's a delta based 3d printer it is from playcast so uh, I do not know really where, which are the difference, but it's, a, a, it's based on a Delta system. Okay, awesome. Uh, so we, we probably have more questions, but let's move on to the next speaker because we are, on a, we are following the schedule. The next speaker who's speaking, uh, let me just quote, is Dr. Johnny Udai. I hope I pronounced your name right yes. this time. <laughs> Very good. And, and I admire Johnny's work for you know, more than a couple of years now. Um, the stuff that he's putting on social media is just amazing. And he's also an educator who's very passionate about teaching. And he's also a very passionate dancer. So I just want to mention that. It's a fun fact. <laughs> and uh, so, um, so Dr. Uday is also a veterinarian, uh, but with many hats, as you can see. So um, Johnny, I will let you take away the podium. Great, uh, actually, Mr. can you uh, share, um, stop sharing so that Johnny can share his slides? Let's see. Uh, I, I think Johnny, you can just go and uh, start trying to share slides. It, it should work. Um, and Matteo should stop. Can you, can you stop sharing? Uh, let me see if I can manage myself. Okay, uh, great. Awesome. Thank you. I think, uh, yeah, is that a... Yes, looks work. Looks good. Oh, great. Well, uh, hello everyone, um, it's a privilege and an honor to share this talk with such great panelists. My name is Johnny Dai. I am a veterinarian with some uh, experience in 3D printing for medical use. Currently, I work as much in the animal as in the human field. In a brief manner, I will talk to you about some facts that I wish someone told me before I started my journey through 3D printing. I will talk to you mainly from a surgeon's perspective and especially talk about the problems I have encountered and the mistakes I have done. And hopefully you can learn something from my mistakes. Uh, at the current state, we can design pretty much anything that comes to our minds. 
However, just because we can do design and 3D print you know, willy-nilly, it does not mean that we should do that without a conscientious attitude. We mandatorily must understand the interactions with the soft tissue, immune system, and uh, bacteria. Um, the image acquisition, this is very important. Uh, we need to remember that a diagnostic imaging study is not necessarily an optimal study for optimal 3D printing. We need to avoid the noise, gaps between slices, artifacts. You can talk to the radiologists, explain to them what you need. They will come up with a, a protocol ideal for your needs. In veterinary medicine, we don't 